The city of Indianapolis spends millions of your tax dollars to settle claims involving police. So we wanted to know exactly how much our city is paying out. 13 Investigates reporter Sierra Putman joins us in studio tonight with her special report. Well, Scott, turns out it's really hard to pin down that number, in part because the city's record keeping is complicated. Plus, most details are kept quiet. State of the right. Bill Rainsberger was living a nightmare. It was very disorienting. Accused of murder in 2014. Today, he's free, but still angry. I had a couple people threaten to kill me just right out of the bat. So you're already grieving, and now yes. you're afraid for your life. Yes. The murder victim, his mother, Ruth. He describes the 88-year-old as a sweet old lady with dementia. I've never been as close to anyone. So he was surprised police thought he killed her. After two months in jail, he was released. The prosecutor dropped the charges for evidentiary problems. Rainsberger sued IMPD and accused the lead detective of lying in this probable cause affidavit. Two federal courts found there were misleading or false statements about surveillance video, DNA evidence, and phone records. The courts thought a jury could find the detective did it intentionally. It just reinforced the whole thing about how I got I got railroaded. The city paid four hundred and ninety thousand dollars. One of the most expensive recent agreements 13 investigates reviewed. This is just one out of nearly 500 settlements we looked at to figure out just how much the city was paying for police incidents. 13 investigates calculated the city spent at least nine point nine million dollars in settlements over five years. More than half of all payouts were for $10,000 or less. Most were related to car crashes. Nearly $1.7 million went to payouts to people like Andre Davis Smith, who was rear-ended by an officer in 2017. I just wanted to be compensated for the accident and the pain and suffering. The most costly type of settlements total $7.8 million in tax dollars and involve accusations of excessive force or civil rights violations. She came up to the car with her gun drawn. Like toward his head. The Browns documented their 2016 traffic stop. The IU law professor and his wife sued, alleging illegal, unlawful, excessive, and unwarranted force. It led to a payout and a rare written apology. The settlement at least makes it clear they did something wrong. They admit that they did something wrong. They paid for it. How did you feel about the settlement process? They're a bunch of jerks. The city just fights tooth and nail, even, even beyond what you might think they would fight. I don't believe that would be a fair assessment. Brandon Beeler is with the Office of Corporation Counsel. They are the attorneys who will represent IMPD and other city county departments. Remember that our dollars we spend are taxpayer dollars and we are incredibly mindful of that. It is a protection to the taxpayer in many cases, not all. Sheila Kennedy used to represent the city. She says playing hardball is sometimes needed. Because settlements are often cheaper than a trial, they don't always mean the city was in the wrong. But if they're paying out a lot of money, they did something wrong. <laughs> Figuring out what went wrong is tough. Most settlement agreements provide vague or no details at all. 13 investigates found 86% have clauses like this that bar and discourage people from talking. I was actually stunned when, when I read it because you're allowing government to basically hide its, its errors and its mistakes. The city says a confidentiality and non-disparagement clause is standard. The confidentiality is more, again, for the protection of each party. By making it so they can't tell what they think happened? It's a standard clause in civil litigation. That's the city's director of communication and policy stepping in. You put me in jail for two months and you want me to talk about it? Rainsberger refused to sign that clause. He wanted to tell his story and his mother's. It makes me mad that they didn't really investigate much of anything. I want them to go out and find who did this. Today, IMPD says Ruth's murder case is closed, cleared by the 2014 arrest of her son, which led to that half a million dollar settlement. So, Sierra, how does that happen? Well, Scott, we're trying to figure that out right now. We reached out to IMPD to get more information about when this case was closed and if it was ever reopened. We have a lot of unanswered questions. We're going to continue to look into this issue. All right, Sierra Putman with that story tonight. Thanks so much.